In 2016, I reviewed 21 Linux distributions, with all but one of them being based on Ubuntu. Although if I was to include the Desktop December series, then I would be able to add one Fedora and a few Debian-based distributions to the list. In third place, we have Linux Lite. Now, Linux Lite strikes a rare balance of being both suitable for all levels of Linux users, from beginner to advanced. They have only included a minimum number of applications, however, they have provided a large range of system tools, many that I wasn't even aware of. One of the unique tools they have provided is the custom-built Lite Tweak, which allows for cache cleanup, freeing up system memory, removing old kernels, deleting old log files, as well as some rare tweaks like changing host name and default browser. The memory cleanup tool freed up 26 meg of RAM, taking me from 369 to 343 meg. I've never seen an option like that before in any Linux distribution. Although it may not be useful with my 16 gig of RAM, but it's touches like this that I really like to see. The welcome screen provides a new user with some starting points to get going with the system, including driver installer, a list of common applications to install, and links to the Linux Lite forum. Another unique feature with this operating system is the hardware database. It contains a list of over 3000 system configurations, which allows you to check whether your system will work with Linux. Linux Lite is based on Zubuntu 16.04. You get the long-term support of Ubuntu, combined with the lightweight XFCE desktop. Xface isn't exactly light on features. You do get a fast responsive application menu, which contains a text searcher. You can get results as soon as you start typing a search for an application. Overall, Xface may not be the prettiest looking desktop. However, the style that Linux Lite have gone for is probably about as inoffensive and inclusive as possible for the majority of users. In the second place, we have Ubuntu Mate 1604. It's still a Linux distribution that I would recommend to new users, mostly because of the welcome screen, but also because of the look changer. I recorded a two second boot up with it on the full system install on my aging computer. Pretty good going for an Ubuntu based system. The only system I have to rival it is a cut down home theater PC based on Ubuntu server, which boots directly into Kodi. I absolutely love the welcome screen. It has all the necessary features to get you started like the driver install, help guides, forum support, and software downloader. The Mate desktop is very lightweight and styled to look like GNOME Classic. Mate was originally a fork of GNOME Classic, but has continued to evolve and gain new features, such as the folder color changer in the Kaha file manager. Ubuntu Mate have provided a desktop changer, which allows you to choose from a few different layouts. The desktop theming is rather green and perhaps not to everyone's taste, but I think there is enough here to get you started with Linux, or allow someone who prefers the old GNOME desktop to keep with the environment that they're used to. There wasn't really much between second and third place for Ubuntu Mate and Linux Lite. Both have some unique features that go over and above most Linux distributions, but in the end it was the look changer that gave the Ubuntu Mate the edge. But now for something completely the opposite end of the spectrum. After two years of using KDE 4, I have really grown to love the desktop. The amount of work KDE and Qt developers have put into the desktop and applications is incredible, and it really shows what can be accomplished by a large team focused in one direction. The move from KDE 4 to the new Plasma 5 desktop resulted in a lot of initial breakages, so I held off upgrading. With the latest long-term support release of Kubuntu 16.04, I was eager to try out the new, more mature Plasma 5 desktop. However, what greeted me was very unstable, but I liked what I saw with Plasma 5, and I pushed on from Plasma 5.5 to Plasma 5.6 with Kubuntu backports. This is where things got even worse. The Plasma 5.6 desktop from both Kubuntu backports and Debian testing was utter rubbish. I needed to go newer for the Plasma 5 desktop, and I didn't want to move away from the Ubuntu base. Only one Linux distribution provided that option, KDE Neon. KDE Neon absolutely won my heart this year, and that is why I'm making it the 2016 Quids Up Linux Distribution of the Year. KDE Neon is maintained by the KDE developers. They provide you a bleeding edge version of the Plasma 5 desktop on top of Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Only a minimum number of applications are pre-installed, consisting of a browser, image viewer, and text editor. The KDE team also maintain a repository of associated Qt applications, 
which like the plasma desktop are kept updated to the bleeding edge. We had a security incident with KD Neon where the repositories may or may not have been tampered with, which made number two on my top 10 Linux security fails video. However, I believe lessons were learnt and I forgive them. The text searcher in the application menu of Plasma 5 is the finest I have seen in any operating system. It not only searches for applications, but also documents and bookmarks. It is also very fast and responsive. The customization options of KDE is over and above any desktop in Linux. You do get simple theming options like changing the launcher style and theme color from light or dark, but you can also go more granular in the options. There are also a large selection of widgets available, allowing you to get the perfect style desktop. Anyway, that's all getting too focused on the Plasma 5 desktop. However, KD Neon Distro is so minimal, my description of it was over in a single paragraph. That was my top three Linux distributions for 2016. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.